Thank you very much. Reflection is a good afternoon. Reflection is a very difficult thing because to try to uh, uh, feed back to you uh, from a mirror, as it were, what has gone on is very, very, very difficult. Especially coming after the previous session, uh, which I found very stimulating. Uh, I have, it's very difficult to, 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 to cast reflections in, 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 in that sense. What I'm going to try to do, however, I'm going to try to look at the forum goals, objectives, and, and expected outcomes and try to reflect on the extent to which, in my view, the meeting did meet those goals and, and outcomes. And I'll try uh, not to end with any purple statement, purple prose about swords. Uh, the meeting had as the objective to take stock of NCD progress in the Caribbean. And uh, the idea was, did the a, a, a meeting fulfill those objectives in, a, in a, as one of the objectives? The other one is to try to harmonize CARICOM priority areas. And the other one is to, a, 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 a communication strategy to encourage the high level participation uh, at the UNHL um, and to explore post-2018 strategies. I'm going to concentrate more on, the, on number three. Before I get to number three, my perception of what went on in terms of the progress is this. In the progress, we have seen that there has agreed that there has been slow progress in terms of the changes in the epidemiological profile as far as NCDs is concerned. And it's slow also in terms of the processes to be followed. Uh, when we look at the Samuels grid, we see that uh, the many of the processes that have been, should have been followed are slow uh, in, in, in development. And I am sometimes comforted by the biblical phrase, the, the mills of, what is it? It's not biblical, the mills of God grind exceedingly slow. And we hope that they are this time grinding exceedingly fine. Uh, when when I, I, I balance the idea of the, the sloth, uh, the slowness in terms of the processes, I, I am comforted that some of these things take a long time uh, to, to change. And one of the dangers, the difficulties, it is less so in the area of the communicable diseases. But in this area we're working on, there's going to be slow, the changes are going to be slow. And one of the things I think is absolutely critical for organizations like this is not to let us lose heart during the process, not to be faint of heart during the process, because the process is going to have it take its time, and not to expect always quick wins and magic bullets that kill mosquitoes. That is not going to be the way. So we have to be uh, cognizant of the, the fact that it's going to be a long uh, 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 road. However, if you think of the glass as half full rather than half, sem half, half empty, I also said half, half empty, I'm sorry, <laughs> half, half, half empty, uh, we have to also take comfort in the fact that uh, there has been, to a large extent, a greater mobilization of the concerned in the Caribbean than we could have ever imagined. The presence of you all here and attentive at this time of the afternoon after the, in the third day is a good idea. It gives a good idea of the uh, level of concern that uh, there exists and the possibility of being able to mobilize the concern. Also, there have been some definite points of light. I think the fact that uh, it is terrible to say this, but the fact that the Heart Foundation has been sued, it means that it's doing something good. I hate to say that. <laughs> that is small comfort. That is small comfort. Uh, but that, what it is doing is biting. And the people who are being bitten are reacting. And this is a normal uh, 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 re re reaction. Also, another point of light has been that there's been, whether we say so or not, uh, when you look at the objective evidence 
uh, the extent to which has been learning about NCDs in the Caribbean, there has been increased level of knowledge about NCDs in the Caribbean. There has been increased knowledge about what NCD does. One of the problems we have always is to our perception of whether that knowledge reached the position, reached the place where it has made a, a difference. And often we don't know often whether it has made a difference at the point to which that knowledge uh, 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 has reached. One of the issues, especially in the third objective, is the communication strategies. And this relates to the previous point I made about have, making sure that the communications are appropriate. I always learned that a communication strategy has a certain, has, has a few elements. And the first aspect of a communication strategy is the audience you want to target. And in this case, I was pleased that we set out at the beginning, there are many other audiences, there are multiple audiences, but one of the groups we targeted was the heads of government for the high level meeting. And that is, people can say that is restrictive, but communication strategies always say you should be clear, at least for this strategy, what are the groups you're going to uh, uh, target. The other thing, are the number two that communication strategies emphasize, the context. We will say that a good communication strategy emphasizes the target audience and that we are clear, there's clarity about that. It also emphasizes the context. It also emphasizes the world in which the audience lives. And someone points out the world in which our audience lives is something that is constantly changing. But I think it is, con luckily in the Caribbean, it is constant enough that we don't have the problem of every six months that there is change. So there's some constants, I think, in the context in which our, our audience uh, 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 lives. The other point also, I think it is very important to note is we must never lose sight of the importance of creating the appropriate experiences in the audience, target audience that uh, we wish to address. And that is why I think our communicate, I'm gonna come back to that again, our communications to the heads of government should not only address, as we always say, their, uh, their head, it should not only address the numbers of people with diabetes, it should address also their hearts. It should also address the human aspect of the non-communicable diseases, the human aspect of it, which you've heard uh, expressed so brilliantly a couple, uh, a couple minutes ago. We should also address the human aspect. And of course, uh, we address the economic aspect, the heart, the head, and the pocket. We should induce, we, we're going to tell them what the, 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 the magnitude of the problem. Uh, we're going to tell them the, the uh, frame, the human aspect. We're going to frame the economic aspect. One of the things, a good communication strategy, which you're going to employ is that it is, you cannot tell people something too often. You tell them, you tell them that you tell them, told them, and you tell them that you told them that you told them. You've got to tell them. So there is no, there is no uh, limit to the number of times that we're going to try, that, that message is trying to be articulated. The other thing is in any good communication strategy that you need to be clear about the outcome. In this case, we are, we are clear for this, our, our outcome is going to be the numbers of our heads of government who will attend the, the, the uh, high level meeting. I agree that is, yeah, high level meeting is not a cliff. Uh, Beatrice put it very nice. I like the imagery. It's not a cliff. Uh, it is something we have to deal with as we go along. But for this event, for this time, for this moment in time, we want to focus on, 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 on that, that particularly. And there's clarity about, we are clear how we want, what we want to do, what we want to get them, to get them there. The other thing is in terms of the outcome, it is a kind of message that we want to send. It is said that messages are in, like a form of a pyramid. You have a lead message, you have other messages down below. And the lead message is, you got to be there. That's the lead message. And all the other messages are going to be subsidiary to that, but it's going to be the lead message, the supporting evidence in terms of what I spoke on before. And then the other one is the media. Uh, I don't mean necessarily the print media or the television media. I mean, 
the, 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 the environment in which you're going to operate. Yesterday, one of the most gratifying things to me uh, of the whole uh, event was the idea that several people said, I will, we can. And people, several people undertook to do something personally about it. Organization, HEC is an organization. HEC in effect is what we call an imagined reality. HEC does not exist, it's not, an, it's not a reality. That desk is a reality. That bench is a reality. HEC is an imagined reality. And imagined realities have their place, but it also cannot substitute for the individual person doing something. So, as we go from this place, I would wish that what was, where's my colleague who got up and said, yes, I will. There she is, there she is. I want uh, her to be replicated, to be cloned in a sense, and have many more. But all of us moves in circles of influence. All of us move. My colleague from OGS said the same thing. Uh, all of us move in circles of influence, and we can use our, our circles of influence really to affect, really to affect uh, 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 what, 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 actually, what actually happens. It is in, 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 intimate personal contact. Of course, it's a formal communication, and our formal institutions, uh, our imagined realities, you know, they will do their, their, their thing as well, but not forget what the personal communication, communication is. And of course, of course is the, the messenger, the credibility of the messenger. Over 10 years, HEC has, has the credibility to be able to, when it, when it speaks, it, uh, it is heard. And I think in grand part, thanks to you, and thanks to the inspired leadership of Trevor and Mesha, it is heard, it is credible. So therefore, uh, it will have the clout of uh, it's cr the clout of credibility, or credibility will lend itself to having clout in terms of providing uh, uh, the, 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 the message. The, 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 the messengers, obviously, HEC is a very important uh, messenger. CARICOM is an important messenger, and unfortunately, Rudy isn't, going to be, isn't here. But I'm sure that uh, Trevor is going to make sure that Rudy knows what things should be done. And those of us, who, those of you who have contact with the appropriate levels of CARICOM, are going to do the 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 the, the, the same thing. Now, the single biggest illusion in the communication is the illusion that once you speak, once you have communicated. It has been communicated, the message has reached. That is a single biggest illusion. And what we must do is to ensure by repeated, repeated efforts to ensure that the message that we are sending has been received, internalized, that is the di most difficult thing. And uh, I would submit that we have the mechanisms for doing it. And I, this is the, uh, the, uh, very prosaic, that we will have to ensure that our message gets to the heads of government. We would have to ensure that it gets to the heads of government more than once and from more than one place. We should have to get to make sure that by the time our heads leave, they will have heard it more than once from many of us here, that that is an important role that they have to play. And that is a responsibility we expect them uh, 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 to discharge. I was very taken by the last session, of course, but I'm going to, in a sense, rep not in a sense, I like expression, repeat what, uh, what Beatrice has pointed out and having uh, the impact on the people. And it's not that I am not taken, pardon the double negative, not taken with the individual experience, but I would like 
in addition to the individual experience, I want to see more people. I want to see, as I said, the four point four point the four billion people in the world that have an NCD acknowledging and promoting that something be done about it. I said, well, I have had hypertension now since 19, since Wendell Wilson induced me to take medication in 1970. He said, don't be a damn fool, you have to take the drugs. <laughs> and I said, hey, you know, animals don't take drugs, drugs are abnormal. And he said, he said, don't be a damn fool. He said, don't be a damn, you know, he, he was my peer, he was my student. So he couched it in the appropriate language, but, but I had the same thing. And I have gone through all the complications. Those of you who had nightmares from taking beta blockers will know what I talk about. They're horrible. But there are 25% of the world's population has hypertension. 25%. Some people said, showed who was here yesterday, in some place, 40% have hypertension. You know, in every, as I said yesterday, everybody is affected. So what I want to see, I want to see more democratization of the problem more a massification of the issue, massification of the concern. That is what I, 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 I like to see. I, I agree that uh, those of us, those, the, the voices of the people, the voice of those who are intimately affected is, is really very important. But in addition, in addition, I want to, uh, I would, would like to see the kind of movement that is guaranteed to affect not only our own leaders, but leaders all over. They're appreciating that we're not talking about the half a million people who have diabetes. We're not talking about those alone at all. We're talking about the four billion people who have one or other uh, 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 disease. Now, because we, we spoke a lot about the multi-sectoral cooperation and I'm going to, that's my penultimate point. I've spoken about the draft communication strategy and I've tried to elaborate the kinds of things I think uh, were either explicit or implicit in much of the discussion we had in terms of fulfilling the four or five elements of a good communication strategy. And I, I referred briefly to the stock, in a sense taking stock of, of where, 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 where we are. One of the things I want to point out again, though, is this of multi-sectoral cooperation. And uh, I, I, I like that session very much. It is going to come often in the, uh, in the outcome document. And what I hope that outcome document does not do is uh, beat the governments over the head again, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not doing this. I don't think that's going to be helpful. I would like to propose that they, for the Caribbean, that there should be one thing that we prioritize. That is arrogance to say that, I take the liberty of saying it. There's one thing we should be prioritized, that there be an appropriate accountability mechanism built into that document. That, that they, in the same way, that uh, maternal and child health uh, movement established an accountability mechanism. And that was one of the reasons why we've seen so much progress in that area. If you look, look at the, the, the global health security uh, agenda, they built in a, an accountability mechanism. We must have some um, mechanism built into the NCD uh, 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 movement that says how you can say to governments, you have not done what you have said to do. I'm not going to dilate on the, poss the various possibilities. In the case of maternal and child health, it was as Ambassador uh, said yesterday, it was because, I know because it was Ban Ki-moon that took a, 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 a personal uh, interest. In. He was the person that took a, a keen interest in seeing that there was a, uh, accountability mechanism. I'd, Ambassador Hart mentioned the possibility of champions. I don't know whether this, it, is, it is how that is going to uh, work out or not. But very briefly, I'm going to end in this. For a long time, 
people like various of you have insisted that I write my autobiography, my biography, obviously write my biography. I've done so, and it's called The Grooming of a Chancellor. I'm going to be a huckster now and tell you can get it on Amazon.com. <laughs> but because Dr. Barnett is a faithful scribe, and because uh, 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 Rudy Cummins spoke yesterday about the genesis of the 2011 uh, 2007 meeting, I thought that he had some things wrong. And I thought I would just share, it is going to be the, probably the last time I speak to you on this issue. I'm going to tell you actually how it happened. In 2000 and just it was 2000, let's say just in late, mid 2000s, we had, there was a committee, commission on health and development, Caribbean Commission Health and Development. I was the chair. Uh, James Osozadis was one of the commissioners. We presented this, uh, out, this report to the heads of government. We said there were three things that were important. One was the non-communicable diseases, two was HIV AIDS, and three was the outcome of the, the sequelae of violence, crime and violence. When I presented the re results to the uh, heads of government, there was much applause for the quality of the report. Nothing happened. It sank like a stone. I was chagrined. And then I realized I lost, I had omitted a lesson which was taught to me the first time I went to see Fidel Castro. You must always ask heads of government to do something that they can do. He also felt well, to do something that they can do. So the second time I, was res I resolved to be a little different when I presented this report to the heads of government. So the night before the heads of government met, I met in the garden of the Governor General of St. Kitts Nevis. And myself and Mr. Manning, Mr. Manning, the two people who have been forgotten in the genesis of the Caribbean success in NCDs. One is Mr. Manning, and the second one is Eddie Green. And in the garden, Mr. Manning's garden, we had a vigorous discussion about a university matter in which we disagreed. We disagreed violently. Uh, and at the end of it, we disagreed. And I said to Mr. Manning, Ms. Manning said, you will do your thing. I was then chancellor, I will do mine. And I said to Mr. Manning then, it is well with my soul. <laughs> and Edwin Carrington, who was there said, my God, that's the him, they're singing funerals. <laughs> you that, that's its kind of thing you mustn't say, they're singing funerals. So after we got back to the issue, I said to Mr. Manning, Mr. Man, he says, I said, let us talk with NCDs. I said to him, I want you tomorrow in the meeting of heads of government to raise your hand and invite your, comma, your heads to a meeting in Port of Spain. So having disagreed on this issue, Mr. Manning agreed on that one. And the next day, in this 2006, Mr. Manning got up and said, I want to invite you, he, to his word, he got up and said, I wish to invite you to a meeting of the heads of government in Port of Spain. And I'm going to watch, I wish to have a local meeting of the problem of NCDs in Trinidad before that meeting. The, 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 the head of CARICOM then was Owen Arthur, who was from Barbados. So he was a cha lead chairman then. So I could go to Owen and say, you know, Mr. Manning is invited. He said, yes, of course. So they, they, they convened in, heads in, 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 in Port of Spain, but we had no money. So I, Eddie Green and I spoke about what is the way to finance it. And both of us found out that Stephen Harper was coming to uh, the Caribbean. So I drafted a letter, myself and Eddie, I drafted a letter and Eddie Green vetted it for Prime Minister Douglas to send to Stephen Harper. And that's where the money came from to support the heads of government meeting in, in, in Port of Spain. He sent it and my colleagues in uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Canada tells me, rarely have they seen such a rapid response. When Stephen Harper received the letter, he said, yes, we will fund it. And that's where the money really came, came from. Uh, the reason why it has been slow in writing these things down. I've always been conscious 
of uh, Plato's dictum. You know, Plato said, uh, the wise men say something when they have something to say. The fools say something in order to say something. Uh, that is why I waited so long before I wrote my autobiography. <laughs> He said the wise men speak because they have something to say. The fools speak they wish because they wish to say something. But finally, let me wish you all a uh, uh, safe return home. And I hope that you remember the events that, uh, of these past three and a half days. But above everything else, I want each one of us to be committed to being as what Martin Luther King would say, be a drum major for the cause of NCDs. And in the circles of influence in which you operate, keep insisting that one of the things we want to see this year is the heads of government attend. And you all have heard all over and over again the reasons for the heads of government to uh, attend the high, high level meeting. I think it can be done. I think the Caribbean can regain the leadership it had uh, in this uh, area before. And I think, the, again, the Caribbean can demonstrate the, the, the value of small size, the value of small size in promoting issues that have major global significance. So those are my reflections, thanks.